They're tiny. You're wrong. They're tiny. We okay, it. so I uh, I was uh, Facebooking recently um, and came across an article that someone had posted, and it, uh, it, it kind of threw me, and uh, I wanted to kind of talk about it on the show. So here's the, uh, here's the header. Ex-Christian Katy Perry promotes dark magic and LGBT agenda at 2015 Super Bowl halftime show. So it starts off with a, uh, a passage quoted, which is, When I was daily with you in the temple, you, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness, which is Luke twenty-two fifty-three. In the recent years, the Super Bowl, almost always the highest rated and most watched television broadcast on the planet, has given over its famed halftime show to trumpet the cause of the New World Order and the Illuminati. And as referenced in our opening Bible verse at the top of the story, the Illuminati knows that it is their hour, and they are defiantly out in the open. So then it has a picture of Katy Perry. Um, She is, if you didn't get a chance to see it, um, she is wearing a flames dress, like she looks like she's fire, and she's riding a giant golden somewhat tiger uh-huh. um, with really big red beady eyes. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so then it quotes her song. It says, so you want to play with magic. Uh, boy, you should know what you're falling for. Baby, you do dare to do this because I'm coming at you like a dark horse. Are uh-huh. you ready for, ready for a perfect storm, perfect storm? Because once you're mine, once you're mine, there's no going back. So it quotes that. Yep. Uh, two years ago, you had Beyonce flashing the Illuminati triangle sign during Super Bowl uh, 48. Uh-huh. The year before that, you had Madonna as a New Age goddess gyrating on a satanic throne. And last year, you had Bruno Mars shouted Illuminati now during his performance. I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that either. (laughs) Um, This year, we had ex-Christian Katy Perry providing the entertainment for us. Perry, whom you may recall, famously renounced her Christian upbringing and has this to say about what her faith is like today. I don't believe in heaven or hell or an old man sitting on a throne. I believe in a higher power bigger than me because that keeps me accountable. Um, she goes on to basically say that she's not a Christian, um, and she still feels like she has a deep connection with God, just does not affiliate with Christians. Uh, so let's see how former Christian Katy Perry did compared to previous years. Katy Perry opened riding a golden monster with glowing red <laughs> satanic eyes, singing the lyrics to her hit Dark Horse, partially quoted in the photo above. Read, the, read those words closely. It's the devil speaking, and he is coming for you if he can. She performed her LGBT fan favorite, I Kissed a Girl, uh, leading as many young women as will follow her into experimentation with the LGBT perverted lifestyle. And Perry closed with another pro-LGBT song called Firework, where she floated over the audience riding a shooting star with the LGBT rainbow at its tail. Uh, The New World Order and Illumination agenda is being hammered into our children at a feverish rate using catchy lyrics and a nonstop droning drum beat with overwhelming power chords. Ending with parents, <laughs> protect your children if you love them. All of this junk, every bit of it, is poisoning their minds and turning them away from God. Katy Perry is the perfect poster girl for the New World Order because she used to be a Christian and now mocks the God she once served. Just like Lucifer did as he was becoming Satan. So. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll say I, I agree with pieces of it, yeah, but a yeah. hint of it. But then they just like, just get weird. They just go crazy and insane, and to the point that it's kind of embarrassing to go. Oh yeah, we're brothers. Yeah, maybe I went a little far there, but you know, it. Yeah, they just go a little far. I think. Well, I think they go a lot far. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I that's, think that's, they go a lot far. It's much more like, than a little. Here, here's the thing: is is like you've yanked. If you have a, a a love for God's word, and you say, and I look at it and say, this is this is supposed to communicate something to me. I'm supposed to know God deeper. I'm supposed to know about Him and His character. You can't be yanking crap from wherever you want. Like yeah. he, the, he quoted the opening quote. What was it? Luke uh, twenty two fifty three. When I was with you, day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. What's the context? He's talking to the. Uh, religious leaders of the time just in the temple it's right before his crucifixion uh this is like 30 to 33 a.d ish um so in all of the 2000 years of history since then jesus prepared us for this exact moment he's letting us know that (laughs) katie perry's coming yeah that's what they're insinuating i hey i'm about to get arrested and and taken in front of the high priest but also i intend to warn you about katie perry's halftime show 
<laughs> That's what I'm saying. You but he couldn't be use Super Bowl because it's trademarked, so he had to say the big game coming up. <laughs> the big game. It's stupid. Uh, okay, and so let, let's let, let's follow. So the the other thing is that they're talking about the she she was entering on the, the on golden this, monster on the golden monster. All right. So I think it's it's trying to harken back uh, to a Daniel seven. And here's the truth. Uh, if that's what it is, okay. If this is a beast emerging from, first of all, it's not emerging from the sea. That's mm-hmm. a, that's problematic. Second of all, do you remember the descriptions of these beasts? Let me give you a go. So a lion that had an eagle's wings, and it looks like its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man, and the mind of a man was given to it. Another beast, a second one like a bear, raised up on one side, three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. I look back, another beast like a leopard with four wings of a bird on its back. The beast had four heads. Uh, and then a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So now here's the deal. If this is supposed to be the beast, either Daniel uh, like did too much of the peyote when he was writing down the description, or this ain't the right beast. It, it, like if, if they're pointing to say this is the guy. It's not. It can't be the right one. Are they referring to Katy Perry as the Beast? Is that what's happening? No, the the uh, the monster, the, the golden monster she was riding in on. Oh, I mean, if you looked at that Katy Perry, she looked like Bam Bam Bigelow from the WWF wrestling. It was the exact same getup. <laughs> huh. Wait, so so let me ask. So uh, just for my un- understanding, so that the Daniel Seven references, it, is that not traced back to like civilizations? Yes, like yeah, yeah, each, it is. A, each like, beast is traced back to like an actual culture and a civilization yeah, that had risen be, and fallen. It, it'd be like a, if in the 1950s you described this great conflict between the eagle and the bear, and how it involves a missile crisis. Everyone's going to immediately think, "Oh yeah, the United States and Russia." Yeah, because those were the national symbols. So right. Likewise, uh, Daniel's referring to what are known as national symbols for his day. Right. So if you're, but but if you're going to take that thing seriously, if you're going to take it uh, as if it was not a symbolic discussion and it was a literal beast, uh, the, it's missed. It's missed the mark. Yeah. So uh, e- even through that interpretation, I, it tells me you have a low view of scripture because uh, I would say that that can't be the guy. The Hollywood's always messing with our symbols. <laughs> and that was the other thing. She was what well, she was on the star and uh, accompanied by the LGBT symbol rainbow. It's God's rainbow. Yeah. It's yeah. God's rainbow. Exactly. <laughs> you can't mess with that. <laughs> That's a pretty, uh, I don't know, ungod sized beast. I mean, if I expected right. a literal beast, I would expect a, a beast now. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? The Lord don't make some kind of halftime show beast. Not yeah. four dudes running legs on something. <laughs> yeah, I feel like <laughs> Like you saw would... the dudes underneath it, like, all right, now move the leg here. This is I'm the like, best that Jesus could come <laughs> up with? I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> That's Daniel 7. Daniel's just like, okay, and I didn't tell you with that last piece, there's actually four dudes that move the legs for it. <laughs> but we're not going to write that down because the they symbolism there is not They threw this thing together in 10 minutes cool. after the last play. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It was ready mm-hmm. to go. I feel it like... Has- it has big, fiery that. red Satan eyes. It's like, no, those are just jewels. Like, I don't think that's really meant to be like, this is Satan eyes. It's like, really, man? So, uh, this look- is your overreaction to the situation? Like, yeah, I'm sure that we can pull some truth out of that, and I'm sure that we can say th- some things about Katy Perry and, and some of the things that she's representing. But to jump to the conclusion that basically you're saying that she is bringing out, like, the the revelation that, that happens and, and the acts that are happening there and then the prophecy in Daniel 7 – Walking on a man-made mechanical beast onto a Super Bowl <laughs> field, if that, yeah, exactly. If it comes back to you, that's what you think God's power or this end realized is. You and I are not talking about the same God. <laughs> yeah, we're when, not. When it, when the thing finished, I was looking at it through the eyes of if my five-year-old daughter's sitting next to me watching this. Is she freaked out? Is she scared? Does suddenly a boob fall out like in the previous Super Bowls? I I was actually quite impressed. Everybody was well covered. Uh, they were singing songs like I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't agree with the message of the words, but I'm talking about the somebody who's just not just you're just sitting like it's just background music. They're yeah. like, yeah, this got a nice little beat. It looked happy. They had little dancing sharks. I love the sharks. Those were adorable. <laughs> those were great. Little ben and I are gonna balls. get those suits. Yeah, it was just it was. I thought it was great. It was just we look we we look ridiculous. We look like we look ridiculous, and it looks like we serve a very small God. If these are the things that we care about, right? If we feel like the great foe of God is do it. This is this is the master plan. Now, now, great, <laughs> granted, the great foe of God is ultimately small in God. I, I get it. I get it. Right. But like, to even count as some sort of foe, mm-hmm. you would feel like you would come up with something better than this mm-hmm. to dominate uh, our belief in Jesus. Oh, hey, hey, look at the technology there. Satan must be real and powerful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I just, I, I, I'm not seeing the connection, and I feel like it, it very much diminishes who our God is. 
for us to be freaking out about stuff like that. Yeah. And we look stupid. Yeah. We look stupid and we make like, make God look small when that's the kind of crap that we're freaking out about. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it made me sad um, when I was uh, scrolling past it and I saw it. And I I, I looked at it and I, I decided that I wanted to read it because obviously the title kind of jumped out at me a little bit. And then as I'm reading through it, it just it, it made me sad because of what that represents. And, and I think you guys kind of hit it with there. Um, you know, if, if that's what, you know, our Christian brothers and sisters are doing with their time, if that's what they've decided to to hold on to is, is not, you know, not furthering the kingdom of God and is not truly speaking about uh, about our God that we love and that loves us to other people and to, to lost people. Um, it's about arguing with each other about whether or not a, a, a friggin' beast that is literally just metal. There's no argument. And yeah. Can you call another Christian brother an idiot and just be all right with it? <laughs> well, the thing is, this is Satan's domain. I, I mean, I don't care what you look at, you will find pieces of Satan. Even in the church, you'll find yeah. us doing dumb things. You know, I mean, I've done dumb things. Here, here. Yeah, I mean. I do them constantly. Hey. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, we just look silly. All right. Well, I feel like I'm going to watch the Super Bowl again next year probably. We'll be checking for the Illuminati if we're still references. around. The, the Illuminati. Yeah. <laughs> the beast has been put in motion. <laughs> hey, okay, so maybe I'm opening up a, a can here that I shouldn't be, but can anyone give me a, a one and a half minute description on what that is? What is the Illuminati? What is the New World Order? What does it mean? I, I, I have no clue. I honestly don't know. They're just words. Okay, hold on. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trusting the Wikipedia for this, a quick answer. Oh, here, man. All here right. we go. The Illuminati, plural of Latin Illuminatus, meaning enlightened, is a name given to several groups both real and fictitious. Historically, the name refers to the Bavarian Illuminati, an Enlightenment-era society founded on May 1st, 1776. Uh, conspiracy theorists have claimed that many notable people were or are members of the, the uh, Illuminati. They were banned uh, by the Bavarian ruler Charles Theodore with the encouragement of the Roman Catholic Church. The all-seeing eye or eye of providence is a symbol that is commonly associated with, with the Illuminati. Uh, you'll recognize a very similar symbol on the dollar bill. Okay. Here's the deal. I bought a Kit Kat bar with a dollar bill roughly four months ago. Devil worshiper. And I felt like there was a beast emerging. But really, that was just my belly rumbling for a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> Rough times. <laughs> Daniel 7. <laughs> da- yeah. Daniel 7. <laughs> Drop the bike. I am hungry. <laughs> Daniel 7. All right. Anyway, stop that. Hey, l- listen here. If you're Stop it if you're one of those people. Knock it off. You're, you're, you think that you're, you're, you're rooting out evil, and you think that you're... Uh, revealing truth to people, and the truth is, is you're making God look small, and you're making yourself look ignorant, and that you have no trust in Jesus. So just pull yourself together and knock it off. And what you're doing is you got your neighbor in the backyard drinking a beer and thinking, I wonder if this Jesus thing is real. Going, oh no, no, yeah, no, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll listen to Katy Perry and I'll go kiss a girl. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're losing the argument by being weird. Hey, uh, not on, like that example at all. On a on a positive <laughs> note. <laughs> On a positive note, Lenny Kravitz was also singing that I Kissed a Girl song, so uh, he could legitimately have done it. Yeah. He redeemed it. I Kissed a Girl and liked it, but I am a guy. All right, fair enough. All right, you're listening to Life from the Path. Uh, you make mistakes in life. Watching the Super Bowl halftime and coming across as if the devil is in it is, is one of them. Listening to our show maybe another, but not on the same scale. Uh, you can catch that. Uh, look at our weekly clips. Go to lifeinthepath.org. Uh, also, a quick shout-out to our sponsors, Bob Eisenhower with the Eisenhower team.